Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and today we're going to be showing you how to solder, program, and connect all the connections to a Naze 32 Rev 6. This episode is going to cover all the basic tuning sets. Look for advanced sets in the future. We're going to go ahead and use this to complete our Versacopter project. The Naze 32 boards that you're most commonly going to find are going to be unsoldered. The ones that we sell in our store come with these three pieces. This is an extra piece for the components that you can uh, put on later. We're not really going to be using this right now, so we're going to put it aside. Now one thing because of the new pin spacing, it's very difficult to get this inside of the Versacopter. So I'm going to show you a trick that can help you with small frames and small multi-rotors that keeps everything very compact. The first step is to install our 1 by 10 by 90 degree pin header with the pin openings facing down and the header facing up, just like this. I'm going to press that in all the way. We're now going to go ahead and dry fit the pin header on the bottom of the Naze 32 board. Once we have that dry fitted, we're going to go ahead and go to the top and we're going to install our uh, 3x6 90 degree. We're going to press this down. You're going to notice it's going to move the little uh, 1x10 down just a touch. That's okay. What we're doing is we're actually looking for the spacing that we're going to need to give the proper fit. Doing it this way is going to give room for all of our standoffs to still mount on future multi-rotors, but it also makes us much more compact. Now that we have the fit that we like, we can lay this upside down. We're going to take our, solder high, our soldering iron and we're just going to tack two of the solder joints. Now if you guys are uncertain about soldering, get some practice on some other things before trying this. It's very, very tiny. I'm going to solder here and I'm going to solder on the far corner. Now that we have that, we can remove our 1x10 connector and we can solder all of our pins. Once we've inspected and we're happy with all of our solder joints, we're going to go ahead and move on to our 1x10 by, by uh, 90 degree pin. I'm going to go back and we're going to press it and you're going to see that there's nothing on here that's going to touch this metal and short out. So we're going to press this and we're going to the exact same process as before. The pins aren't going to go quite as far through, but we're going to lay this down flat and then we're going to solder it down. Start with the farthest one away from us. It's not how much solder you put in, it's where you put it. So just take your time, one solder joint at a time. Make sure that you don't puddle up too much where it bridges the gap. If you're getting into multi-rotor, soldering is going to be a very common thing whether you're building or repairing. Once this is cooled down and dried, we're going to go ahead and inspect all of our solder joints and make sure we're happy with them. If you soldered your joints right, what you should see is a little bit of puddling wicking down each lead on your connector. I don't want all the stress of this connector to be transmitted to these pins, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen this up and I'm going to kind of cut just a little quarter inch piece of foam tape. I'm going to apply the foam tape just ahead of the pins, making sure that my pin header is orientated just like this. I'm going to slide it into the connector, press it in, and then press it down against the foam tape. Once you've had everything soldered, and we've also mounted our pins with a little piece of double-sided tape just to give that extra bit of security, we're going to have a link down below that you can go to to download the free downloadable app on Google App. That's going to be for clean flight. Making sure that you have a data cable, not just a power cable. This is very similar to the ones that go into Android phones. We're going to go ahead and plug this in. With this plugged in and a Wi-Fi signal on your PC, the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and flash our firmware. So on the far left, the very bottom option is firmware flasher. We're going to go ahead and select our NAS board. And when choosing the version, don't select a version that's older than 1.11.0. Always check for the most recent version and try it out. If you have any problems, you can always revert back to an older version. But 1.11.0 is the first version that will work on a NAS32 Rev 6. Once we click that, we're going to go ahead and say load firmware online. That's where your internet connection comes into play. Once you've seen it load online and all your connections are made, hit the flash firmware button. You're also going to notice that the uh, green bar that's going across as it's flashing your board. Don't unplug your board until it says finished. Programming successful. There we are. From this point on, we can go ahead and we can go up and hit the connect button in the upper right hand corner. When we do that, we should be able to move around our NACE32 board and see a graphical representation of our quadcopter moving exactly with it. Now that our board is flashed and we can see it reacting on the PC to our movements with the board, we're going to go ahead and make our connections. You're going to notice in the upper right hand corner that we're going to have a diagram. That diagram is going to help you mount motor 1, 2, 3, and 4. To make our connections, we're not going to go ahead and just leave this upside down because if we went in the orientation, it would be backwards. What we're going to do is we're going to flip this upside down 
and have all of our leads nice and neatly dangling. We're gonna go ahead and grab our bottom right one first, which is right here, and we're gonna plug it in. Now you're gonna notice when we plug it in, you're gonna see one, two, three, all the way through six. Where number one is, that's gonna be our signal lead. Ground is closest to the edge of the board. We're gonna go ahead and plug, plug number one. In this case, the signal wire is orange, or it's gonna be white on some other ESCs. Motor two is gonna be on the top right, motor three bottom left, and motor four top left. Now we have two extra connectors that we don't need. To remove the extra wires, just take the tip of a razor blade and pop the little keeper, then slide the wire on out. You can put these aside and save them for later. Now that all of our ESCs are plugged into our control board, our next step is to plug it into your receiver. In this case, we're gonna be using the Grapner GR, uh, GR12L. Now keep in mind, where the signal wire is, in this case, is on the very bottom. So you're gonna wanna make sure you put your signal wires on the bottom, ground on the top. The only connector that has the ground is gonna be our pin number one. That's the three prong pin here. And in this case, blue is the ground and purple is the signal. So we're gonna go ahead and flip that. So it's pointed just like that. From that point on, we can follow the process where brown is number two, plug it on the bottom, and then green, then yellow, orange and then black. Now provided that we have our receiver bound to our transmitter which if you haven't done already go ahead and do so. We're gonna go ahead and make our connection with the NAS board and the computer. On the upper right hand corner we're gonna hit connect and you should see the NAS board acting just like we had before where it's wiggling right along with the motion. Our next step is gonna be to power on our transmitter and plug in our battery. Make sure you have no props on at this point or any other point until we're ready to fly the machine. The first thing we're going to do is something that's a little bit unique and we're going to get out of the way now. We're going to change the cycle time from 3500 down to 1500. To do this we're going to hit CLI at the very bottom left and that's going to open up a command prompt page. In that command prompt page we're going to want to type set space loop time space equals space 1500 and then enter. Once you hit enter, if you did it successfully, it'll say loop time set to 1500. At this point, you want to type in the word save, S-A-V-E. It's rebooting. Now, a funny glitch in this, sometimes it always doesn't just reset and allow you to go out of this. So we're going to go ahead and hit disconnect. After we hit disconnect, we're going to give it about five seconds, and we're going to hit reconnect. Now, when we hit reconnect, when we go to the very bottom of the page, we should see cycle time, and instead of being 3400, we should see around 1500. That's exactly what we want. After our loop time has been set, our next step is to go to configuration, and then change our maximum throttle to 2000. And then hit save. We may need to step down our minimum throttle a little bit, or move it up depending on what we find when we power up the motors. Our next step is to go down to receiver, and change our channel mapping. Because we're using a Grapner, we're gonna to wanna to tell it that we're using the Grapner channel mapping. So in, underneath channel map, if we hit the down arrow, we're gonna move it to JR Spectrum Grapner. Once we hit that, we're gonna hit, uh, click it. It's gonna say throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna hit save. Now that we have our channel mapping, we're gonna go ahead and move each control, making sure that everything is moving. One thing we're gonna notice though is when we bank to the right, Roll shows to the left. When we pitch forward, that one's correct. We want when we pitch forward for it to move forward or increase in PWM. When we move our yaw stick to the right, it should go to the right. This one's going to the left. And when we increase throttle, we have an increased throttle on the map. That's good. So in this case, we need to reverse roll and yaw. To do that, we're going to go to our menus, our base menu in this case on, the, uh, on our MZ24. We're going to hit reverse slow. We're going to reverse channel two, reverse channel four. Now when I bank to the right, I go to the right. Now when I yaw to the right, I go to the right. Make sure not to go too far or you activate your motors. All right, making sure we hit save, we can move on to our next step, and that is ESC calibration. For this, we're gonna disconnect our battery, and we're gonna turn off our transmitter. We're gonna go down to motors, and when we click on it, we're gonna see this menu here. 
I cannot stress enough, do not have any props on at this point. I'm gonna say that every step is gonna drive you nuts, but it's because I want your hands to look as good or not as bad as mine. Down in the lower right hand corner, we're gonna see a little check bar. It's gonna say, I understand the risks, propellers are removed, enable motor control. We're gonna click on that. Now we're gonna take our master slider and we're gonna slide everything to the top. Make sure you don't have your batteries connected at this point. With your master slid all the way at the top and with your cursor hovering right over top of your master button, we're gonna plug this in. At this point, you should hear two beeps. We're gonna slide the slide at the bottom. And now when we slowly advance throttle, all four motors should start at the exact same time. Now one thing why I have this facing up I wanna point out, all of our EPACs are now sold with standard threaded motors instead of these reverse threaded. We got a lot of really great feedback that people were losing their little propeller nuts. We do have those for sale, but we didn't want people to have to constantly go back and buy them. So what we did is in all of our EPACs, we have an extra set of lock nuts with standard thread. That way you have extras. And that way in case you lose them on your reverse threaded or on your um, motors that run in a reverse direction, you have extra lock nuts. So now all four motors come with these silver tip motors that have standard righty tighty lefty loosey threads. While we have this slider and this motor option open, the next thing we can do is we can make sure our motors are running in the right direction and double check to make sure everything is properly orientated. Number one is one, two is two, three is three, and four is four. So the first thing we're gonna do with this activated is we're gonna go to motor slider number one and we're gonna slide this up. This should be the bottom right motor. And that's correct. Now along with the motor being correct that's running, we wanna make sure it's spinning in the proper direction. If you look at your diagram, you're gonna notice a little arrow telling you which direction it should go. So when we power this up, we're gonna look for the motor to go that direction. And it does. Now let's go ahead and check motor two, top right. And the direction should be spinning in, and it does. Number three. Perfect. Number four is going to be the top left. And that's fantastic. Now if any of these motors are backwards, all you need to do would be to unconnect them and switch any two of these wire leads and then reconnect it. Now that all our motors are spinning in the proper directions and in its proper orientation, our next step is to go back through and we're going to make an arming switch for our motor. So instead of pulling down to the right and to arm it, we can put it on a switch and we're also gonna go acro and horizontal mode. To change these modes, we're gonna click the modes button. It's about right in the middle on your far left menu screen. The first one we're gonna see is arm. For arm, we're gonna go ahead and add range. And for this step, we're gonna need our transmitter on. Our battery is still plugged in, so we're good to go there. Now, every radio is different. In this case, I already put my arm switch on a three pole switch right here. What I want is I want the very top to be my arm switch. So as you can see, when I move this around, my little dot moves with me. I'm gonna go ahead and move this and highlight the range real close by. That way, this lower switch doesn't do anything and the very bottom doesn't do anything. I have to have it all the way up to arm it. Once I'm happy with that range, I'm gonna hit save. And you can see it locks it in. Now while we're talking about arm, this is a really high RPM and I don't want that. I want it to be lower. To lower it, I can go back to configuration and I can go to minimum throttle. Let's go ahead and change this to 1090 and see how it feels. We'll hit save. Now when I arm, it's much lower now. Let's go ahead and move it just a little bit lower. Let's go down to 1080. Save and reboot. Let's go back to modes. It's a little better. If you ever have it where your motors are kind of hopping whenever you land and it hops around, lower that minimum throttle setting. Now if you just get into multi-rotor racing and you want a little bit of a safety blanket, you can activate either angle or horizon mode. Horizon mode is going to give you the ability to auto level, but if you push it really hard to the far limits, you'll still have the ability to do rolls. Angle mode is going to bring you back and it's going to give you a certain angle that you can meet but not exceed. In this case, let's go ahead and add angle mode. Now you can see that we have aux 1, aux 2, and furthermore. We're going to switch down to aux 2 because we're already using aux 1. And you may have to program a switch that you need 
for the other two. In this case, I need to program it. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my base menu. I'm going to go to channel set. And I'm going to go down to aux 2. It's currently saying none. This is a learning system, which makes it very nice. I'm going to go ahead and say select the switch. I'm going to select it to this one here. Now you can see when I move it, it moves the cursor. Now I want to make sure when this is activated and everything is full forward that I'm in angle mode and I'm armed. That way when I take off it'll be on auto level. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over. This is entirely for your own preference. Now when I go ahead and switch back one, I'm going to move out of that and I'm automatically in disactivate angle and I'll be in acro mode. That way I can take off and land very easily by having everything push forward but when I want to stop it, I pull everything back. I'm going to hit save. Let's make sure everything works. On. You're going to notice when we activate angle, a little red LED that lights up. Arm, angle. Beautiful. Now the modes are set the way we like it, we can go ahead and unplug our battery and turn off our transmitter. From this point on, I have some preset values that work really good with Powerpack E, and a really big thank you to Schizo, otherwise known as John Davis, for giving us these settings. He's going to also continue to help us tune our machines so we can provide you guys with PID loops for NAS32s and any other control boards we work in the future. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to our PID tuning. On PID tuning, we're going to want to make sure our PID our PID controller is on multi-we rewrite and our profile is one and we're gonna go ahead and change our roll pitch and yaw values a little bit because we lowered the uh, loop time cycle to 1500 we can now up our P uh, gain a little bit this is gonna give us a little bit more control and make a nice smooth flight the first adjustment we're gonna make is to our roll P or proportional we're gonna turn that to 5 our pitch is gonna turn into 8 and our yaw is going to turn into 11. Now we're going to leave our integral alone or we're going to go over to derivative. For our derivative on our roll we're going to go to 26. Our pitch is going to be 28. And our yaw is going to be 8. While we're on this page we're also going to go to our roll rate and change it to 0.5 and do the same with pitch and yaw. Once your screen matches mine, go ahead and hit save. Now that we hit save, we're going to go back to receiver and we're going to go to RC rate. The RC rate that we're going to be looking for for starters is going to be 0.9, but we're going to change the expo to 0.7. RC yaw expo is going to be turned to 0.3. Once you've made those adjustments, hit save. All of our PID settings and settings that we need to fly this have now been done. We're now going to move the button and everything up and getting ready to fly the Versacopter. Let's go ahead and start by disconnecting this. And we're gonna flip this over. At this point, we're gonna route the wires and we're gonna mount the board to our little board mount that's gonna enable us to make the USB accessible through one of these little side holes. To mount our NAS32, we're gonna use this little mounting plate that's included in our kit. This mounting plate can clip on in multiple different areas. The area we're gonna focus on is gonna be in the front and we're gonna stagger our board back just a little bit so the USB lines up perfectly with a little hole on the side. We're going to use some very good quality foam double sided tape. Now on the one side here we're going to roll this back just a little bit and we're going to roll the edge. That's because that little mounting or we're going to tape to the little uh, connector that we fastened down. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and fold this over two times. Make it a little ridge just like that. This is going to cup this little board right here very nicely. We're going to pull our leads down through the back so we can route our antenna down to the rear of the Versacopter. And we're going to press down our foam tape. This is going to make a nice flat mounting surface. It's also going to protect our wires if they get pulled. Let's go ahead and remove the rest. And I'm going to use a little gremlin here to make sure I can orientate what's the bottom and the top. I'm going to have his feet going towards the bottom of the Versacopter and his head going towards the top. I'm also going to make sure that I line up the USB with a center dot. I'm going to move this over, find the very center of my control board, 
I'm making sure I'm happy with the positioning for the USB on the dot here and it's centered on the control board, I'm going to press it down. So to test fit this, I'm going to make sure that this little arrow is pointing towards the front of the VersaCopter. I'm going to press this down in the notches. Now if we did everything right, when we look through the side, we should have nice easy access to our USB connector. Now that we're happy with the placement of our control board, we're going to go ahead and route these wires and make them neater. Keep in mind that we don't want it in between the USB and the sidewall. So I'm going to go ahead and go about mid down, uh, midway down. I'm going to go ahead and fold this over on each other and put a zip tie in it. The idea of this is to be designed where if you have to do any kind of field repairs or servicing or open it up, it's very easy to access it and fix it and get back flying again. Now we're going to make sure our little feet on our guy are facing the right direction towards the bottom. We'll tuck this in. Everything looks nice and neat. Let's go ahead and deal with these wires here. I'm going to pass my antenna up underneath. And now I can pass it through the hole and heat shrink it to our little zip tie that we put on. I want to be able to access the bottom plug quickly and easily, so I'm going to go ahead and fasten this down facing up. It doesn't matter which range or way you arrange the receiver, but I do want to get as much of my uh, antenna out as possible. I'm going to put a little piece of sticky back tape, make sure my bottom plug is accessible. I'll just pass it down just like that. Now I can go ahead and route my antenna. and then take an extra little piece of heat shrink tubing and fasten it to the end. This is just a little zip tie that's included that gives us the ability to route our antennas. If you have diversity, go ahead and use the two side holes and then pass the antennas through the center one. At this point, we're ready to put the bottom plate of the VersaCopter and install it. Make sure that the triangle is pointing towards the back and slide it on over. The beautiful thing about the new version 2 boom clamps and the C-clamps is everything doesn't move. Even if you have to take this off, you can service it and you don't have to realign all your motors. We're gonna take the six nuts and we're gonna tighten them down. I'm just holding my finger on the back end, but if you have this tightened down, you're not gonna need to go back with a two millimeter screwdriver and hold it still. You're only gonna need to do that for the center two bolts. Our last two bolts, we'll need to use our two millimeter screwdriver and tighten it up. You don't need to go crazy and tighten it too much, just make it snug. Now we're going to go ahead and test flip this stock, but you can always add extra options like your camera mounting plate in the front or bobbins. Now that our machine is all buttoned up, there's one last adjustment we want to make and that's calibrating our accelerometer. To do so, we're going to go ahead and reconnect, this time going through the side hole that we created, making sure our USB is oriented proper to the control board. Once we slide that in, we're going to go to our connect button and hit connect. You'll also see that your Moving once again for you. Now we're going to go ahead and go to our calibrate accelerometer. We're going to click it and it's finished and now it's recorded flat and level. Make sure you don't do this with your machine sideways or tilted. Make sure it's on a nice flat level surface. If you're conf or worried that it maybe didn't do it right, go ahead and do it again. At this point we can hit disconnect. Disconnect our USB cable. Our final step before putting the props on to go out to test fly is we're going to go ahead and do a dry run here and move the motors and spool everything up and check all our functions to make sure we're happy with it. Now the battery is also our CG. So if you got something like a GoPro on the front maybe through the optional AP plate, your battery may be further back. But if you're flying it with nothing on it or maybe a GoPro mounted here, you're going to need to shift it. The important thing is when you pick it up by these two center bullets that it mounts nice and even. Once you're happy with that location, let's go ahead and tighten it down. We're not going to need to remove the battery until the test flight is over. Now we're going to power on our transmitter. And now we're going to power on our machine. Fantastic. Now our arm and switch I put to this switch here, when we move it all the way forward, it should activate. That's exactly what we want to see. Deactivate. All right, at this point, we're going to unplug this, we're going to turn this off, and we're going to mount our props. Now to mount our props, make sure you use the included bushings that size directly to our shaft that are in with our prop bag. These are going to press into the back of the props, and then the prop itself is going to fit down over the shaft, and then tighten up with the nut. The direction that we want this to go is we want these to swing in, 
and we want the numbers facing up. It's amazing how easy it is to put the wrong prop on the wrong motor, so take your time. Okay, before I tighten down, we'll check it. These props are spinning in like this. That's perfect. And these props are spinning in like this. Now that we're happy with that, let's go ahead and take a wrench and tighten them all down. Okay, we have a little bit of light left. Let's go out and take it for a test flight. Well friends, the Versacopter is all ready to fly now. One thing I strongly encourage you, whenever you test fly in a multi-rotor, make sure you have a good clear distance from you or from anyone else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in after I turn my transmitter on first, but I'm gonna give it a good clear distance away from me. All right, always turn your transmitter on first. Second, we're gonna power this up. Now I don't have a video transmitter yet. That's gonna be in a later episode. But uh, I did put my antenna on just to help me with orientation. Now, we have all different colors and all different formats and layouts of, uh, that you can choose with those different colors. If you're a newbie, maybe select something like orange in the front and black in the back. That way you can have orientation when you're flying line of sight. In this case, this is gonna turn, turn into a race quad. I don't need to worry about orientation. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and step back. I'm gonna activate the switch. All right, let's go lift it off. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's have some fun. You get that? <laughs> that was close. That was very close. Well, John did a great job with this initial tune. You guys can feel free to make some adjustments little by little. Whenever you make adjustments, I strongly recommend that you take a screen capture of your previous ones. That way, if you don't like it, you can always know what you go back for. All right, let's go ahead and check out horizon mode. <laughs> All right, one thing I do see is we need to go ahead and lower our P rates on our horizon mode. For everyone, that may be a little bit different. All right, so let's go ahead and bring this in. I always like to turn it around at the very end. And shut down the motors. Friends, I want to thank you for watching. Now we built this on the Versacopter, but this can go on a lot of different platforms and the same simple principles. The only difference is you may have the tune a little bit different. We're looking forward to doing more content with Schizo and Freybot to help us learn more and more about advanced tuning and also how to initialize and how to assess the machine and tune it accordingly to get the best performance out of it. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're watching this now, both the Versacopter upgraded version two and also the Naze32 Rev6 is also available in our stores. We'll see you next time.